Hi, welcome back guys. This is your sensei, back with another fanfiction. This is the second part of, what if Naruto got harem and Elden Ring? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Oh, now it was his turn to look away, face gone red. But after I bloomed in Kaled, her head hurt suddenly. She frowned, touching a hand to her forehead. My memories are still jumbled from that day. Radon pushed me to my very limit. I was so terribly desperate. If Finlay had not recovered me, I may well have died there. The ache in her temples intensified. Perhaps young Millicent was born from that catastrophe. I suspect there may be others. Then we'll prepare for them. His silence wasn't enough for her. Molinia scooted closer and lay down beside him. She reached out with her good hand, seeking his palm. He didn't shy away from her. On the contrary, he welcomed her fingers in his and gave them a reassuring squeeze. Heat speared through her face. Yet nevertheless, she found herself snuggling closer to him in search of warmth. Jeez, you're freezing, he yelped as her metal arm brushed him. Here, he nudged her a little. You can have my blanket. I'm a bit too big for that. Nah, it's fine. He smiled. I like tall girls. Malenia sputtered. Odd how such words could undo her. They'd strongly done anything together. Holding hands, a few embraces, the odd tentative kiss, initiated on her part. It was the very definition of a slow-burning romance. Not at all like those torrid tales Miquela oftentimes read of. She liked it. This felt natural. Good. Pure. There was no need to rush. There was a word for this. Courting. Courting. Yes, that was it. This was courting. They could move as slowly or swiftly as they liked. She would much rather take her time. She, she wanted to savor this. Her eyes flitted down to his. She wanted to kiss him again. Desire burned within her. No, she mustn't. He was able to resist her rot, even push it back to an extent. But she didn't wish to try her luck. My brother was a studious sort, she said at last, trying to distract herself. Surely there are other needles out there. Millicent should keep hers. His shoulder brushed hers. Even if it could cure you. She glared at him. I will not sacrifice a daughter to gain my happiness. Daughter, hmm. His eyes sparkled, and she knew she'd stumbled right into his trap. All right, if you say so. She let her hand, the real one, settle against his. Would you heed my words, for but a moment? Naruto gave her a sidelong glance. Always. If others come seeking her, we may have to fight them. She spoke laconically, choosing her words with great care. Nor shall the greater will sit idly by forever, not when we stand in such direct opposition to it. I cherish these peaceful days with you, but I fear war may soon come. Hey, now. He nudged her nose with a finger. I ain't a weapon. I'll help you. But let's not go the genocide route, eh? Maybe we can talk our enemies down. Our, not hers. And if we are attacked? Naruto's smile gained an edge. Malenia shivered pleasantly. She hoped for a cure soon. If he kept looking at her like that, she might go wild. To hell with it. She tugged him closer. May I kiss you, again? His brother was dead. Slain, in coldest of blood. Morgoth rose from his throne. This blasphemy cannot be allowed to pass. Moog had been many things, but at the end of the day, he was his kin. He would be avenged. Was this what it felt like to have a family? Millicent couldn't make heads or tails of this. She'd never had a family before, not one she could properly remember at any rate. The notion of family had ever been a fleeting concept to her, vague and confusing. She knew what the word meant of course, what it implied, but she'd not given much thought to it. Her duty had always come first, superseding all else. Yet here she sat before the halog tree, being fussed over like the child she no longer was. It was humbling. Sister. Millicent sighed. Must you braid my hair? Nanya hummed happily. Yes, we must. Now hold still. The ghost of a smile touched her lips as she let her sister twist and tug her scarlet tresses into a clumsy braid. It would not hold she knew, but she appreciated the sentiment regardless. How much time had passed since she first found her way here? Days? Weeks? Months? She no longer knew. Time meant precious little here in the depths of the halog tree, and as such, she'd soon lost track of it. Was she wasting her time here? The thought had her squirming. 
Do hold still. A lower, richer voice at her flank had her perking up. We'll never be able to fix your hair like this. Millicent bobbed her head, cowed. Yes, mother. A hand patted her head. Hum, good girl. Ee, -e -e. the praise made her squirm girlishly. A quintet of tiny Millicents squealed in her head. She praised us. I must confess, you're not at all who I thought you would be. Nor I, you. The demigod hummed behind her. Perhaps you'd be willing to tell me of your journey? How did you come to be here? Millicent was eager to accommodate her. She'd come here to return what was meant for Melenia. Her pride, her strength, the needle embedded in her flesh. And in doing so, she would die. Yes, she had known that, thought herself ready to give her life. Such she knew was her purpose, her meaning in life. Hers would be a short existence. She would die with her purpose fulfilled and Malenia restored. But they weren't letting her take the needle out. It had begun with that blonde brute. He'd not let her remove it when she woke up. And afterwards everyone kept fussing over her, taking care of her, attending to her every need treating her like, like a person, all with naught asked of her in return. Initially she had tried to push them away, to distance herself from these strangers, to sever any bonds that might yet form. She'd failed. For you see, despite all her reservations, she had come to cherish these little moments of peace. The Lord and Lady of the Halligri were. What was the word? Selfless? Yes, that was the one. They gave and gave and gave all without asking a thing in return. She didn't know what to do with selflessness. How did one respond to kind deeds such as these? Even the strange man who gave her the needle and her new arm had at least asked for aid in battle. That much she could understand. A favor given must be repaid, a debt made, one to be settled. By contrast, this was madness. And yet here she was, having her hair brushed someone who may or may not be her sister, and someone who was, in all likelihood, her mother. She possessed dim memories of others being kind to her before in such a manner. Of other girls with red hair, but their faces were murky, their names even more so. Pain racked her head whenever she tried to think of them. She'd forgotten something, lost a piece of herself something terribly important. Its absence gnawed at her, a hole in her heart. Nanya tugged her sleeve. Big sis, precious little light, must protect, always. She looked down. What's that you have there? The little girl offered her something. Flower crown. Millicent felt her face begin to burn all over again. When had the child stopped braiding her hair to make that? No, it didn't matter. She bent her neck and let the child place it upon her head. Lady Malinia Mother smiled softly and drew the smaller girl into her lap, drawing a giggle from her offspring. Jealousy reared its ugly head in Millicent's heart. It should have been here. Could that have been her in another life? Could she have been loved? It made her chest ache. You're crying. Am I? Nynia's innocent observation had her touching a hand to her face. It came away wet. That's strange, she hiccuped. Why am I? Two arms, one flesh, the other metal, drew her backward. Mother's chin came down over her shoulder. Dear girl, if you wanted a hug, you had but to say so. Something loosened deep inside Millicent's bosom. I think I would like that, very much. Right on cue, Nania plonked down in her lap and hugged her as only a child could. Merry blue eyes beamed up at her. Love you. Millicent warbled softly. Fresh tears rolled down her face. Thank you. This was it, then. She could feel herself breaking. There could be no turning back now. They'd ruined her. Spoilt her purpose. She could never bring herself to take the needle out now. No matter what she may or may not become. Because she didn't want to die anymore. She wanted to be held. She wanted to be loved. She wanted. A distant tremor rattled the tree, shattering her thoughts. Ah. Still holding her, Malinia craned her neck toward a distant bough, high above their heads. Seems he found them. They finally made their move. Millicent followed her gaze with a frown. Found who? Another quake rattled the world, closer now. And over it, a familiar voice, a shout of triumph. Aura. No one you need concern yourself with, dear girl. Malenia patted her head, making her feel like a small child. He has them. They'll be dealt with shortly. An odd itch nod at the back of Millicent's mind. Nynia swayed in place with a merry giggle. More sisters? Yes, dear girl, though I doubt that these four will come quietly. In a flash, Millicent remembered. 
her sisters, she shooed Nania off for her lap, wriggled free from Molinia, and staggered to her feet. He'd kill them. She just knew it. She must stop him, he. A hand caught her by the scruff of the neck and reeled her backwards as one might a naughty child in need of discipline. In an instant she found herself right back where she started. Release me at once. I will not, child. Melenia's arms were akin to bands of steel, holding her fast. Fighting them now would only bring you pain. Trust in your father. Mm, Nynia nodded. Papa's strong. Millicent's face turned an atomic shade of red. These two she could accept. But that blonde brute? No, nay, never. He is not my. Rest assured, he isn't the sort to kill needlessly. He may leave them wishing for death, however. Millicent gulped. That does not reassure me. No? Then let me tell you the story of how we first met, of how he showed mercy, even to a rotten woman like me. The quartet advanced. Down they went, through root and stem, they followed in search of the fifth, of their lost long sibling, she who had failed to bloom, she who had forsaken them so. None challenged them, yet for all the lack of resistance, something was wrong. The halig tree did not rot, for it was a halig tree no longer, but an ur tree reborn. It was healthy, golden, though it allowed their passage, it rejected their presence. Weakened them, the divine rot that strengthened them began to ebb away. Step by step did their strength erode. They became sluggish, their bodies became tired, weaker, doubts began to surface as they forged on. They who were of one mind began to falter. Four were they, sisters all. Mary, the eldest, no longer to wield her halo scythe with ease. Maureen, the second, clutching her no-heavy tree spear tight to her chest. Amy, the third, reached for her curved swords, unable to draw them with the dexterity she once held. Even poor Pollyanna, the youngest, clutched at her dagger, and began to falter in the face of such unexpected change. But still their purpose spurred them on. They must reach the heart of the halic tree. There, they would bloom. For their mother. For their rotten goddess. There, Maureen spied the path ahead and waved her siblings on. Below awaited their goal, their prize. They would return to the beginning. They would bloom. They would. Roots rose ahead, denying them egress. Going somewhere? Much to the sisters' annoyance, a man emerged from behind a golden bough to bar their path. Fair of face was he, messy blonde hair swaying in the breeze, blue eyes bright and keen, whiskered face set in a stern scowl as he looked upon them. He did not walk their way, nor did he make any move to challenge them. He simply stood there, frowned now as he gazed upon them. For, he blinked, guffawed, scrubbed at his eyes with the back of one hand, and blinked again. Unbelievable. You really do look just like her. Five daughters in as many months. Palming his face, he shook his head, setting his hair swaying. I swear, this tree is messing with me. He leaned past them looking toward the no-barred exit, as though he expected to see still more. Are there any more of you? Anyone else joining the party? The sisters didn't respond. They saw no need. Why would they to such drivel? Mary found her voice first. You are no sire of ours. You see, he wagged a finger at her. Ordinarily, I'd agree with that. I wish I could say I've gotten used to fatherhood. I really do. He began to crack his knuckles. But something tells me you didn't come here to join the family. Step aside. Amy stepped past to flank him. Our destiny awaits. She must bloom. His smile gained an edge. The sisters found themselves disliking it. Destiny? Yeah, no. He raised his hand. They saw the golden fire shimmering within. Not gonna happen. She's free. Now. You can be, too. You can be better. No, we cannot. Maureen shook her head. He did not see. He did not understand. What you ask is impossible. She hefted her weapon with intent, wondering why it felt so heavy, so large, when she had been able to hoist it with ease only hours before. Move. Now. Or you will be moved. It is possible, he stabbed a finger at them. You can change. If Millicent and Malenia can be their own selves, so can you. His voice rippled over them, bringing with it a wave of searing anger. I know you have your own names. Identities. Don't pretend otherwise. Take a moment. Think this through. The sisters paused, conferring among themselves for a moment. But only a moment. At length they drew apart. Mary spoke for them first. We have made our decision. Yeah, 
Hope bloomed in his eyes. It saddened the sisters. Somehow? What might that be? You will take us to the false flower, Maureen intoned, and we shall kill her. Do so, and we shall let you live. His face fell, and he shook his head once more. Mafraid, I can't let you do that. Guess it's time for the all Yuzumaki special. Pollyanna tilted her head. What is this, this special you speak of? Nothing much. An ominous haze rose around his the blonde's body. Just the part where I kick your asses and make you listen. It's a skill of mine. And here I was hoping not to bully a bunch of kids. Maureen brittled. We are not children. No, you're acting like it. He tittered at them, much to their dismay. Look at yourselves. You've lost a lot of strength by coming here. Didn't you know this tree purifies rot? An ominous silence stretched between them. Mary raised her weapon. We are still four. You are but one. You would go to war with us, even so. War, he crouched low to the ground, one hand gripping the bark. Nah, this ain't war. This is discipline. The wind whistled, and he was past them. Pollyanna fell first, driven into a wall by a vicious punch. Maureen whirled, only to find her spear intercepted and crushed down by a booted foot. Young and eager. Even as he spoke, he caught Amy's blades with both hands and hauled her off her feet. Is that all? A lazy overhand toss sent her hurtling through the air. I've spent years training to keep my friends and family safe. Now I have one to fight for again. I bled for this power. Every day. Where did you train? In a swamp. Mary's scythe raked across his back, staggering him, or trying to. He only laughed and fell to a knee. Hold thy tongue. She hissed, anger mounting at last. This pointless resistance avails thee not. We will have what we came for. Your words bore us. Girls, girls, four against one. And you're worried about this fight being boring? He dragged himself upright, shaking his head once more. I'll spice it up for you then, Kirama. His body burst into golden light. Then he was among them. A clawed hand closed around Mary's attacker's face and whipped her into Maureen. Amy and Pollyanna were still riding themselves when he fell upon them. He caught the spear slamming at his gut in one palm, conjured a golden claw from his stump and spun, bludgeoning the redhead who'd sought to stab him. A cry of pain went up, but he didn't seem to hear it. Rather, he ignored it, strongened his heart. Enemies were to be dealt with, and if he didn't deal with them here, and now, they'd never learn their lesson. Slitted scarlet eyes snapped to the remaining duo, bringing with glee. He hunched his back and dove at them with a snarl. Are you not entertained? Cries of terror filled the air. They sisters fought well. Naruto felt he could give Millikan's siblings credit for that much. Despite all their fear and screams, for all the terror he inspired in them, they did not falter. Nor did they retreat though they certainly could have. He would not have chased them had they done so. Instead they fought to the bitter end despite overwhelming odds. It still wouldn't save them. He respected their effort, doomed though it was. A fine quartet they were indeed, even with him batting them about like children and flinging them into one another all over the place. Their cohesion remained intact, their teamwork damn near unparalleled, but at the end of the day it was just that. Teamwork. They were stronger together as a team, working in unison to fend off almost any foe. And so he would isolate them, pick them off, one by one. Perhaps that was cruel of him, no, it definitely was. But he couldn't afford to be nice here. He knew them, after all. This was his Erd tree after all. He knew everyone who set foot inside it. His gaze raked over them, taking the sisters in turn. Mary, the eldest, now favoring her right side, her halo scythe bent and blunted by heavy blows. Maureen, the second, clutching her fractured tree spear for dear life. Amy, the third with those curved swords, hesitating at the poor Pollyanna, the youngest, warding at her dagger before her face to fend him off. Likewise, he knew what these four intended. They could not pass. They must not pass. Not in their current state. To let them near Millicent, or Sage forbid Melenia in her current state, promised disaster. He would do what he must. A pair of rotten blades whistled in at the back of his head, even as a halo scythe hoked in at his heels and a mighty spear struck at his chest. A three-pronged adak. Clever. Clever wouldn't beat him. Not like this. He didn't deign to defend as such, pausing only to interpose golden forearms between himself and certain death. Duck, dodge, dip and dive. 
Swatting them aside didn't even tickle. Once, twice, thrice he parried the sisters, deflecting their attacks with graceful ease. That was three accounted for now, but where was the fourth? He sensed the dagger long before its owner pounced at his exposed flank. Is that it? He swayed out of Pollyanna's path and tripped her in passing. She crashed into Mary. Down they went in a tangle of limbs. Maureen and Amy took full advantage and struck out at him when he wasn't looking. This time, he took the hit. Hone steel struck his back and met Strongen's skin. The former shattered. In the same instant, he raised his right leg to kick Maureen down the roots. Her cry of pain fell on deafened ears. Not so Amy, her sister managed to duck the follow-up blow and proved herself every as capable as her mother. For she snatched a S-strong of her broken blades out the air, dove under his sweep, then brought it crashing down on his forehead. Naruto caught her wrist. Squeeze. Now, the S-strong fell from her trembling fingers. Better. He complimented her effort, but still not enough. He drove his skull into hers, and she stumbled away, clutching her face. Then her stomach now as he folded her torso over his fist in a cruel strike. Clenched knuckles ground into her gut. Deeper still. She gasped, retching for air, so far from her sisters, who were only just now recovering, as shifted his grip. The rot in her snarled at him. Kirama roared it into silence, suppressing it. Bereft of its influence and might, Amy gasped, falling like a broken puppet at his feet. One of the sisters howled imprecations at him. Might have been Maureen. Didn't matter now. Naruto stepped over Amy's dazed form. Next. The sister scattered, moving to strike from three sides again. Nope. Not dealing with that again. He could only imagine poor Mary's surprise then, when he blitzed her. Poor girl absolutely yelped. He hit out at the eldest sister and was rewarded with a dull crunch of bone as his fist found her face. From there he opened his hand and used it to grab her and run, dragging her along the dirt as he did, smashing her head down time and time again. Her struggle ceased after the fourth slain. With his hand on her, he found her connection to the scarlet rot, so much weaker than Melenia's, and burned it out. Crimson chakra flooded her veins. She screamed once, a short, sharp sound. He closed his heart to it. The foul presence of the outer goddess retreated with an outraged squeal, unable to stand against him. Mary wasn't able to either, and slipped into unconsciousness soon thereafter. She'd wake up a changed person. If she woke up, you didn't just shove Chakra into a person and hope for the best. If her core will was strong, she and her sisters would meet him in their dreams and, hopefully, find a way out of her nightmares. If not, well, he tried. Two left. He dropped her like a hot potato and waded toward the remaining sisters. Maureen rushed him with a senseless shriek, hands bared in a desperate attempt to gouge his eyes. Naruto caught her neck in passing, wrestled her down, seized the rot within her and yanked. What little remained held no sway over her, without it well. The results spoke for themselves. The second youngest tumbled past him and hit the ground in heap. In a matter of moments she joined her sisters in slumber, and with that, he rounded on the last foe to face. One to go. You! You fiend! Pollyanna warded her dagger before her face, trying to fend off an attack that never came. What have you done? Wouldn't you like to know? She whimpered. I very much would. No point terrifying her now. I freed them, and I'm going to do the same to them. All their lives they had known only rot and pain and misery. Amazing what a little light could do. Pollyanna faltered in the face of his fury. We just want to bloom. That was the rot talking. Sorry, can't let you do that. His hand closed around her face, hoisted her up. Now hold still and let me fix your everything. What was she looking at? Melenia blinked. She blinked strong. Scrubbed at golden eyes with the back of her false hand now, just to be sure, even as the other held a baffled Millicent in her lap. To be perfectly fair, she'd expected something like this. Naruto had even gone so far as to warn her of such before he'd gone to face the intruders. One might have thought she would have prepared her heart for. And she had. Really, she did. She'd never once doubted the outcome of the battle. If her intended could best her with minor effort, then surely these pale shadows of herself stood no chance. But seeing as they say, was believing. And right now, she saw Naruto clad in a cloak of shimmering gold, dragging four unconscious women behind him. Two were slung over his shoulders, and one to each golden hand.
leaving him looking pleased as pudding. There wasn't so much as a scratch on him. He'd won flawlessly, just as she expected. Really, the outcome had never been in doubt. Millicent burst out of her lap with a yelp, shattering her thoughts like so much glass. Did you kill them? Not at all. Her consort deposited them at their feet with a pleased hum. See for yourself. Ninia skipped after her, sibling, bright eyes wide and eager. They looked just like her, so pretty. Melenia found herself following, staring over long at the slumbering redheads, even kneeling to inspect them. Now, one new daughter she could accept just as she had little Mania Larn to cherish, even. She was a miracle of the Halleck Treternetter tree, a dear wish granted, so she at last made some modicum of sense. But by all the old gods and the new, who were these four? Each resembled her in some small way. Indeed, said resemblance was nigh and uncanny. From their half-lidded sleepy golden eyes to her wild red hair, right down to their pale skin and pensive expressions, even in sleep they resembled her. One of them whimpered in their sleep. Slowly, tentatively, she touched their face with her good arm, stroking their cheek until they quieted. Something stirred in the back of her mind, like a fog lifting on a sunny day. Naruto made a noise that could only be described as smug. See? You're a good mom, after all. Malinia flushed to the very roots of her hair. Of course, his jab meant she couldn't ignore the others. She touched the remaining trio too, one by one. And in doing so she found that she knew them, remembered. Not just their names but their personalities, strange as it might seem. Were they truly parts of her? Pieces she cast aside when she'd bloomed? Or something more? These were as much her daughters as Millicent was, though she had little memory of either within her. She truly did not remember having children. When Naruto had asked that, she'd spoken truly. She'd never taken a consort, not once. Yet here these girls were. Mary, the eldest, her hair cut almost boyishly short, a leader ever hopeful. Amy, her hair styled in a loose braid that had seen better days, always thinking of the future. Maureen, missing her left eye, hair bound in a tight bun, so quick to temper, always eager for a fight. And last of all, little Pollyanna, her hair longer than her siblings, despite her petite frame, shy but loyal to those whom she trusted. Her blood ran through them, each of these girls, all the same. To a one, their clothes were battered bloody rags, although their wounds and weapons were nowhere to be seen. She suspected Naruto had something to do with that. He likely thrashed them within an inch of their lives, then dragged them to her for punishment. And while might be able to heal their wounds, he could strongly sew their outfits now, could he? Millicent fretted over her siblings still, idly shaking Maureen. Will they wake up? Maybe, Naruto plonked down on the ground beside her. Depends entirely on them. He was quick to amend his words when she made an anguished noise. I can't force them to let go of the rot, you know. I can burn it, suppress it for a while, but in the end, it's their choice. The rod is all they have ever known. You cannot expect them to choose differently. Nynia hummed a little. They will. How can you be so sure? Simple. Those bright blue eyes fixed on her, quelling her angry look. You were like them once, weren't you? All it took was a needle and a little kindness. Millicent opened her mouth, closed it, opened it again and rallied now clutching at her false arm like a petulant child. I do not deny that, but those were extraordinary circumstances. There you have it. Melenia felt the ghost of a smile touch her face. We live in strange times. Listen to your father. A rare, impish impulse stirred in her. Unless you're suggesting you see him as more than that. Millicent's face burned an incandescent red. Mother. Her smile grew and Millicent saw it. Her willful daughter flushed like the pure maiden she no longer was and kicked at the ground sullenly. Worry not, Tiwa's merely a jest. And it was. For the most part, she couldn't very well have her daughters thinking of Naruto as more than a father. Such would be uncouth, of course, but in truth she wasn't sure how she felt about the notion of sharing one's partner. They hadn't even done anything terribly intimate yet, and already she found herself displeased by the idea of another woman warming his bed. Just thinking about it made the rot writhe within. Nynia scooted forward and began to kiss the foreheads of sleeping quartet, one after the other, from youngest to eldest. It proved a suitable distraction. What are you doing? Helping. Her daughter chirruped. Helping how? Millicent was all but beside herself. They may never wake. 
They will, came her soft reply, spoken with all the surety of a child. How do you know? Nynia giggled and pressed a raised finger to her own lips. Is HHH. Mary stirred at their feet, mumbling softly. Where am I? It was like FL seeking a domino. When she began to rise, so too did her sisters. Some slower than others, some with a fair bit more protest, but one by one, they awoke. Millicent made a pain noise where she stood, but she couldn't bring herself to move away. Melenia couldn't bring herself to blame her daughter. She too, found herself paralyzed by indecision in this moment. Even little Nania looked on, spellbound. Naruto alone stepped forward, ready to intervene if they proved hostile. Here we go. Golden eyes fluttered open. Sharp, angry, anxious, confused. All that changed the moment they laid eyes upon her. Look, Pollyanna perked up, startling them all terribly. It's her. Mary rubbed at her eyes. Where? Oh, I see her. Maureen tilted her head to the right. Mother. Amy clasped her hands. It really is her. Ahem. Naruto coughed into his fist before they could babble further. Seems you've come to your senses. Now what do you have to say for yourselves? The sisters exchanged a long, lingering look between themselves, one that seemed to last an eternity. Finally, four heads bowed in complete submission toward him. We're sorry. You better be, he huffed at the lot of them. Darn kids, do you have any idea how strong it was to bring back your sanity? Millicent blinked. She blinked strong. How? Tell you later, and don't just apologize to me. Naruto shook his head, stepped back, and he pulled Nania into his arms. I ain't the only one who needs to hear those words here. The quartet pivoted on their knees like good little girls. In fact, I think you owe these two a big hug. Melenia stiffened, and Millicent with her, suddenly finding themselves pinned beneath four anxious gazes. Not quite eager, but tentative. Naruto's words had stripped the last barrier away and brought the full weight of the girls' attention crashing down upon them. Anticipation built, swelling in the air like lightning, ready to burst. Oh, oh, dear. Pollyanna squirmed a little where she knelt, looking at her nervously. Mary dared a tiny, tentative smile. Maureen scooted closer. Amy started to reach for her with her good arm that was the spark that set everything into motion. It suddenly became startlingly clear just why Naruto had scooped up Nania and retreated. Malenia's sixth sense shrilled a warning. Too little too late. She had an instant to brace herself for the coming storm and Millicent even less. Mother, sister. With a singular cry, the quartet launched themselves up from their knees and pounced upon them. Down everyone went in a tangle of arms and legs. There was no pain, no discomfort, no angry snarl from the rot. She simply found herself swarmed, cocooned by warm arms, slender bodies, babbling voices, and happy tears. It felt, she didn't know how it felt. Comfortable wasn't the right word, but she wasn't uncomfortable either. Content? Yes, that was it. She tried to hug one of her daughters, only to find herself swarmed anew. Grasping hands latched onto her, and poor, flustered Millicent, clinging for all they were wart. Millicent tried to plead into the chaos, to no avail. Sisters, please, be reasonable about this -o. says the one with a head start. I saw her first. No, I did. Me. Naruto plunked down beside them and planted Nania in his lap, grinning like a fox. Our work here is done. We'll just watch. Don't mind us. Although Malenia Sitlow found herself pinned by her daughters, her maddening quartet whipped around to stare at him. Naruto tensed. Wait, one began. If he's with mother, does that make him father? Father, quick, grab him. Don't let him get away. Naruto tried to stand. Mistakes were made. Maureen grabbed him and Nania, and in an instant, they were drawn into the madness of happy arms and laughter. Loretta stumbled into the chamber with a yawn, one hand fanning her mouth. Forgive me, I was sleeping. What did I miss? Her jaw seal seek head opened as she saw everyone sprawled out among each other. What is the meaning of this? Life fell into a strange rhythm soon thereafter. Papa? Naruto found himself mildly baffled by it all. To have a miracle daughter was one thing, but to suddenly gain another a short time later followed by four more soon thereafter. Well, even now, a week after the fact, he still didn't rightly know how to deal with it. Neither did Melenia at that. In the end it fell to them to figure it out together. 
each lacking experience, they chose to take life day by day. For him, he'd taken to writing in a journal if only to marshal his thoughts. Father? Not that he was unhappy with these present circumstances, mind you. Not at all. He'd always wanted a large family. Just thinking about it made him smile. Da -dee. Six daughters? Not a problem. He had shadow clones and spades. No one would be neglected. Is he ignoring us? I think he's ignoring us. Neither would other members of the family. It was his turn to watch over McQuella's cocoon today, and while he'd admittedly not done a very good job of the latter, nothing had changed on that front as of yet. Melenia's twin still hadn't been reborn, his cocoon still shimmered a faint gold, and they were still waiting for some semblance of a response. He knew McQuella was in there somewhere, he could sense his spirit, but his body was changing, growing, becoming something else. He wasn't right sure what the Empyrean would look like when he emerged, but it would be soon, surely. Papa, stop writing already, don't ignore us. Ignore what no umph? Naruto grunted as someone several someones slammed into his back, forcing him to double over his journal shut or risk dropping it into the puddle at his feet. He thanked his lucky stars he was already sitting, else they might have bowled him down there and there. Greedy girls, he laughed without rancor. Tap my shoulder next time, would ya? Mary and Maureen grinned and nuzzled closer, as did Millicent, even if she looked a little embarrassed at having been dragged into their antics. You said you would train us this afternoon. The former Maureen found her voice first. It's well past noon. You didn't forget, did you? Huh? He blinked and looked up. The light in the grove had dimmed considerably. Is it already that late? Millicent granted him a small, shy smile. We did try to rouse you face here. She corrected quickly, but you were very focused. Always so serious, she still wouldn't call him father. Unsurprising. She'd need a bit of time before she came around. Hopefully they'd be able to work on that in the coming. Mary took hold of his left arms and Maureen, his right. Together they all but dragged him up. Or perhaps that was their intention, until neither released him. A deadlock was inevitable. Maureen glared at Mary. You let go first. The eldest huffed. I shall when you do, sister of mine. Millicent palmed her face and heaved a sigh of her own. Why must you be this way? A bead of sweat ran down Naruto's brow. Yeah, that about summed it up. Clingy girls, he couldn't help but laugh a little as they tug him back and forth. He didn't much mind it. Millicent aside, Mary and the others had never been shown much in the way of affection. They had lived loveless lives, for it to be so readily available to them now. They simply couldn't help themselves. Ergo, they got greedy. That's enough, you too. He lifted his arms, hoisting them upright and off their feet. When they didn't leave go he glowered at them. Mary, Maureen, you have until the count of three. They winced and released him at once, looking as though they expected him to strike them. Worrying, a thought occurred to him as he contemplated it. Come to think of it, who was it that sent you here in the first place? Sage Gowry. Mary answered dutifully. He dragged us out of the swamp told us it was our duty, our destiny, and so we followed the call. His sixth sense tingled. It was his only warning. Well, well, Gowrie, that name sounds vaguely familiar. Melenia strode into the chamber, a sleeping mania nestled snugly in her arms. Even so the goddess managed to look absolutely smug as she leaned into his side. We already have business in Kaelid, do we not? This is but another reason to rush their post-haste. She was still on about that, even now. Naruto blew out a breath. Melenia, no. We talked about this. Indeed we did. Which is precisely why we're going. Why was she being so stubborn? I said I must make amends, and I intend to. Not only to Radon, but to Kaelid as a whole. He pivoted to face her fully. Don't make me call Loretta. You cannot. She tossed her head FL seeking her long scarlet hair over one shoulder. She's quite occupied with Pollyanna and Amy up in Elfail. I very much doubt she can hear you. Well, she wasn't wrong there. The night of the Halig tree had warmed quite quickly to Melenia's daughters and proven all too eager to take them under her wing. Bit of a shame that he could have used her help swaying Melenia right now. He could see the determination gleaming in her golden eyes, the faint lift of her chin, the defiant pout she wore. She was going to be stubborn about this, he just knew it. Blast it all. 
He just wanted to relax a little longer, hold on to these happy moments while he could. Was that so wrong? Mania startled awake in Malinia's arms with a yelp, a pained cry so poignant that it tore at Naruto's heartstrings. It hurts. Her words were spoken with such shock and pain that all eyes turned toward her. They're burning me. The little girl gasped and curled inward against her mother's breast, clutching at herself. They're burning the tree. It hurts. Make it stop. All thoughts of arguing fell to the wayside. He laid a golden hand on her head and channeled some chakra there until her cries quieted. She fell back into fitful slumber, whimpering softly. Distantly he became aware of the world around them, of Pollyanna and Amy barreling down the stairs with Loretta and hollering about intruders, an army outside. It all sounded so far away. SHH, SHH, he cooed softly. You're okay. Just sleep. This'll all be over when you wake up. Nania whimpered. Hurts. I know. He kissed her forehead. He took her into his arms and handled her off to Millicent. I'll be right back. Naruto, no. Melenia saw his face palmed her own. Whatever you're thinking, don't do it. We must consider this rationally. Naruto, yes. He stood stiffly, eyes blazing with intent, and she knew any chance of arguing with him was long lost. Naruto smash. They really were under attack. A might army advanced upon the gates of Elphale in lockstep. Their boots shook the very earth. He could see them marching from the pat. Knights, trolls, trebuchets and other contraptions that didn't concern him. What did concern him were their numbers. Counting them proved an exercise in were being teleported in as he looked on, appearing in a rush of golden light as though someone or something were summoning from far away. He counted dozens, hundreds, thousands of them. Yet for all those who advances, some lingered. These were armed with torches, trying and failing to set fire unto the sturdy golden roots of the newborn Erda tree, yet harming it all the same. For a moment, he could have sworn he heard Nania whimper, despite the distance between them. Kurama rumbled a growl. Sounds like scorched earth to me. Naruto's world went red. Scorched earth it is. Wind rose around him. His body blazed gold even as his hands opened. Chakra keened within each of his palms, taking familiar destructive shapes. He spun and unleashed them, hurtling a pair of racenshuriken into the seething mass below. He couldn't possibly miss. Not at this range. Not with so much fodder below them. Now when he could sense their ill intent. Not satisfied with two, he loosed another pair. Two became four. Six now. Dozens died in an instant, obliterated before they even realized his peril. The sudden barrage and the screams that followed brought the army to a grinding halt. He took the chance to shout down into the silence that followed, burn one more root and I'll burn all of you, alive. A cloaked figure, larger than the rest, detached itself from the army and stomped forward, cane in hand. He glimpsed a grisly horned head and a twisted tail, one that lashed the ground angrily as he looked on, sweeping a goodly number of unlucky soldiers out of his path. Foul usurper! The man's unfamiliar voice brayed up at him in return. Cease this foolishness. Yield and open the gate if you wish to live. The only fool I see here is you, Morgat. Malinia stepped up beside him, wearing her battle armor once more. Truly you are mad to strike at us here. How did you even find this place? The horned man recoiled. And so the witch shows herself at last. Naruto glanced at her, not quite comprehending. Morgat? she grimaced. The brother of Moog. Oh. He winced in return, anger cooling for a moment. The guy we killed. He was the lunatic holding Maquela captive, right? Indeed he was, Melenia thumbed her chin. Morgot is mad in his own way, however, slavishly devoting himself to the greater will and the golden order as a whole, though both have been silent until now. Still, I can't help but wonder, what does he hope to gain from this? Vengeance? A chance for redemption? Or does he simply wish to remove our fledgling Erd tree from the world? I cannot say. Below them, Morgoth found his voice. Surrender the godchild at once. So that's his aim. Melenia absolutely hissed, a rare sound she seldom made. I will not give up our girls. Our? The way she said it sent a pleasant little thrill through him. Inexperienced in romance, though she might be as was he and fledgling though their relationship was, there could be no denying the joy those words brought him. He wanted to hear them again, over and over again. 
for the rest of his days. He threatens our family. Malinia looked to him, awaiting his response. How shall we answer? A trebuchet barked and a flame hurtled their way. Naruto gave it all the respect it was due, namely, none. He casually flung a racing shuriken at it, blasting it clear out the sky. Fiery sparks rained down upon Morgoth's army from on high, like so many dying fireworks, casting the world in baleful red glow. Knights cried out and shrank back, burning beneath the scalding hail. That answer your question. Malinia looked at him with half-lidded eyes. Her lips parted to speak. Enough, perhaps sensing the momentum slipping away from him. Morgoth barked out below them once more. You will burn that blasphemous Erd tree to the ground and the child with it, or you shall die. You have no other recourse, no hope. An army stands against you. An army? Piss on that, Naruto shouted back from the path. We have a Kurama. Your argument is invalid. There was a pause as they considered his threat. What in the greater will's name is a Kurama? A golden hand rose. Take one step forward and you'll find out. Morgat scoffed and crossed the line. Nothing happened. I see naught but empty air. A rush of black light could light be black. Burst past the castle walls, raced over his head, and detonated, annihilating a score of knights and trolls. Then another. Another now. Hellfire rained down on the battlefield, turning the plains into a killing ground. Head aching, ears ringing from the blast, Morgoth fell to his hands and knees. When next it returned, the usurper's voice was smug and far too close. We'll accept your surrender now. The omen king bridled and climbed to his feet, temper roused. Never, I shall not yield. Is that so? Golden danced in his peripheral vision. Thoughtlessly, he looked down. Every single drop of blood drained from Morgoth's pallid, horned visage. Naruto looked back with a grim smile. Much to his horror, Malinia stood with him. Then this shall be your grave, brother of mine. Together, they swung upward with all their might. Clenched knuckles barreled into his face. And then there was pain. Morgoth had never thought to face Malinia in combat. He regretted it now. Oh yes, he did. By the gods did he regret it. He had forgotten. Forgotten what it was like to be truly pressed in a fight for his life. To wage war against a foe as great, if not greater than he. Errors were made. And they were all his. That first punch nearly killed him outright. The impact that followed even more so. Clenched knuckles barreled into his face. His back kissed an iron root. And then he was gone tumbling end over end. Crashing through men and catapults like so much kindling. A hand scrabbled for purchase at one of the battlements as he found himself blasted over it. By some mercy the stone held, and he managed to cling on, if only just... A long shadow fell over him. Bugger. I had no quarrel with you, Morgoth. Truly. Malinia alighted before him, eyes hidden beneath her helm, face carved from stone. Leave this place, swear never to return, and you shall be allowed to live. His gray face writ in a scowl. And where is your pet? Do not call him such. Malinia's face went red beneath the helm. Gods above. Malinia, blade of Mequella, being shy. He'd never thought to see the day. My intended is busying himself with your beasts. Morgoth looked back. A giant golden fox, an actual fox, was ripping through his army as though they were not but toy soldiers. Bodies hit the floor, flew through the air, shattered into countless pieces. Color drained from his face. Even the trolls couldn't hope to stop him. The few who dared try were summarily stomped to death. He looked back to Malinia with a scowl. You slew my brother. Oh, whoa. Golden eyes rolled in abject derision. That degenerate pervert who wanted to FK my brother's half-dead corpse? She raised her false arm, blade CL seeking in salute. Truly the world is lesser without him. Here's to Moog, the first of his name, and the rod I shoved down his throat. Miquela is well to be right of him. It was too much. Morgoth lunged with a roar. His half-sister parried him effortlessly and thrust her blade through his torso, bending him double. We've never fought before, have we? Her lips brushed his ear and here at last, he glimpsed her golden eyes beneath that wretched helm. There was a high, wild light in her gaze now, one that spoke of battle madness, an anger, sadistic godly glee he wanted no part of. I wonder why. He grit bloody teeth against the pain, refusing to cry out. Wench. Malinia laughed actually laughed, 
and kicked him off her blade, leaving him to crash down onto his back. His cane narrowly deflected her sword as it sought his throat. Sparks skittered across his face to blind him. The moment he blinked she grabbed him by his horns with one hand, wrenching his head to one side. Her blade crashed down on his neck. Frantic, he swung his tail, trying to sweep her legs. Rather than retort, the rotten hopped over his tail, kicked off one of his spectral weapons, defying momentum to hang in the air. Morgoth recognized it too late. He'd seen it from afar once, just as he'd seen what became of the poor fool who tried to defend themselves against it. Waterfowl dance. In his blind panic, he too made the mistake of guarding. He should have run. His courage availed him not. Melenia was upon him in a dervish of death. Not a moment later, a dozen wounds blossomed along his back and chest. With them, his strength slipped that much further. He crashed to a knee and conjured a mighty golden hammer to his free hand. Swung strong. Now, a dull clang was his reward as the rotten woman was forced to abandon her dance and deflect at the last. You're strong, Morgoth. He heard the smile in his half-sibling's voice. Stronger than Radon, yet your mind is weaker than that of a child. Hold thy tanuj, he hissed. I shall not. His little sister tutted. What manner of madman chains himself to his abuser? Silence. Anger empowered him further, enabling him to surge to his feet. The Golden Order is all. The Golden Order is all but ashes. Look around you, brother. Melenia flung out out an arm. You alone champion it. Godwin is gone. Moog has been slain. Radon is rotten by hand. Rikard fed himself to a serpent. Malekith is nowhere to be found and stars know where Rani is. To say nothing of mother and father, your own sire stands in exile, and you would wage war upon us because your god tells you to. Thou art a fool, brother of mine, the most foolish fool to ever exist. He wiped a line of blood from his mouth and glowered at her. You will not live past this day. I will see your line eradicated, torn up and burned, root and stem. Laughter. He wasn't prepared for the laughter. It burst out of Malenia in a short, sharp bark of amusement, as though he'd made some terrible joke. Or perhaps he was the joke. He didn't know anymore. The lack of such frightened him more than he cared to admit. You will try, dear brother. You will try. She lowered her blade, letting it drag in the dirt. I've heard all I wish to hear from you. Time to switch. Sweo arg. Words warped and horns broke through the air as a blonde meteor fell out the sky and plowed into his back, smashing him into the roots. He felt someone tap a boot against his spine. Miss me? Ah, uh, so the blonde braggart had returned. Which meant? He made the mistake of turning his head. Sure enough, he found only death there. No more. He could hold back no longer. It was this or death. The same death his army had suffered. Thy kind are all of a piece. He bucked the blonde off his back, righted himself squeezed the hilt of his cane until it began to creak under his grip. Pillagers, it crumbled away, revealing the blade beneath. Emboldened by the flame of ambition, I shall smother thy embers once and for all. No ambition here, pal. Much to his chagrin, the whiskered warrior merely folded both arms before his chest. I won't even move from this spot. Melenia balked. Beloved? He clc ked his tongue at her. Hey, have some faith in me. Morgoth swiped at him when he wasn't looking. He missed. Impossible. Had he misjudged the distance somehow? Naruto only smiled. A clever trick. It shan't work again. This time he saw it when he struck. Little more than a twitch of his head. A third time he swung only for the wretched rapscallion to sway out the way. His feet remained planted against the roots of the halig tree, but that smile only bloomed larger with each passing moment. How he hated it. How he loathed it. Are you trying, or? Knave, Morgoth went mad, conjuring all manner of spectral weapons to get at him. The new tactic availed him not. Every other assault was blocked, or in some cases, outright ignored. Fight back, you coward. A knee slammed up into his chin, jarring his teeth together with a painful CLCK. He bit his tongue and gagged. A hand caught his tail. Morgoth froze. Oh, no. Naruto grinned. Oh, yes. The blonde devil world spun him around with vicious speed, and quite suddenly, Morgoth found himself airborne. Clouds blitzed past as he glimpsed the Halig Treeternetter tree below, the city of Ephael rushing by. The sight took his breath away, 
if only because he could truly see from here, see the city, see the bodies of his army, see the ruin that had been wrought. A hand settled on his shoulder, warm as a sunbeam. Nice view, ain't it? More got rounded on him in the air. You can fly. That and jump good. Going down. Ground. Blood. Pain. He must have blacked out at some point, because he woke suddenly, righting himself with a gurgling gasp. Had to get up. Had to move. Where was he? Why was he in a crater? With a groan, he touched one hand to his head, only to find broken horns there. Several had lodged into his neck. Ah, yes. That would explain the blood. Marshalling the fading dregs of his strength tore them free and muttered an incantation under his breath, suffusing his body with golden light. It didn't heal him completely, not enough, but it stemmed the worst of his wounds. For now because the blonde braggart was waiting for him at the lip of the cater he'd created. Are you done? His temper bridled anew. Nay. I think you are. Golden eyes gazed placidly back at him, without hate or fear. No, T was a far fouler emotion he faced. You know, it's kind of funny and sad. Morgot planted his blade in the ground and leaned against it, gasping for air. What is? If we had met under better circumstances, we might have been friends. He offered one to him. Now, it doesn't have to be this way. You can still stop. Never. Naruto frowned. Wasn't asking. A spinning kick crashed into his ribs and sent him stumbling away. He was still tumbling when he heard a low keening noise. A strange sphere smashed into his back and brought him low. Another found his leg, ruining his knee. Five firm fingers metal fingers, closed around the back of his head and smashed him into the roots of the hallock tree, breaking his nose. A cursed Melenia? T would seem she wasn't content to let her consort fight alone. They could have continued further, could have embarrassed him yet more, he knew. Instead, they let him go. Realization dawned. So, this was it, then. The end of his long journey. He bowed his head with a groan. Kill me, now, before I recover. Naruto froze. What? I will not stop. He turned a bruised eye upon them, willing them to understand. I cannot stop. So long as I live, I will hunt thee. His shoulders slumped. I can do no less. There is no other path for me. Here at last, the blonde hesitated, little fool that he was. How can you say that? It is all I have ever known. As you wish. Melenia raised her arm. Hey, hey, you can't just kill him like this. It is what he wants, or would you rather he suffer? Rest now, brother. The blade descended. Morgoth closed his eyes. He felt no fear, only peace. Cold steel descended. Is he dead? Nania nudged Morgoth's body with a tiny toe. The Omen King didn't budge, didn't twitch, didn't even breathe. Naruto almost found himself smiling despite the macabre situation. Say what you would about her vigor but his daughter didn't lack for courage. Perhaps that was because the Halig tree had made her the best of both words. She had his bravery and Melenia's resolve, his kindness, but also her mother's strength. She was beloved by Millicent and her sisters. Woe betide anyone who tried to harm her, because if she didn't kill you first everyone else would. Even now she didn't flinch in the face of death. Melenia tutted softly. Come away, child. You shouldn't see this. No. Their little sapling turned grave eyes on her. I have to. I want him here. Melenia flashed him a puzzled look, one Millicent and the others shared. He offered them a shrug. They brought his body here to the Halig tree at her request. Demand, really. He didn't rightly understand why himself, though he had an inkling. Nania's last ditch cry in his hand had prevented Melenia from taking Morgoth's head to be sure, but she'd still struck the Omen King a fatal blow right through the chest. Make no mistake, he was dead as can be. His heart did not beat. He did not breathe. His once golden eyes glowed no longer. As he looked on Nania set her right wrist to her mouth. Then she bit down, strong. Oh. She cried out despite herself, but didn't hesitate. Pausing only to hold her now bleeding vein, held it directly over Morgoth's mouth. Melenia jolted. What are you doing? Their child didn't look away. Making things right. The tree told me to. Her words were enough to still her mother. Melenia hesitated, dithering as a bit of red-gold blood welled forth and dripped down into Morgoth's open mouth. One drop. 
two, now, three followed. A moment passed. Another now, another. Ninia muttered something under her breath. It sounded like a chant. And then, Yatag. It was like watching a man get electrocuted. One moment he lay dead at their feet. The next every fiber every sell-off is being thrashed into motion. More than that, Morgoth's body erupted in a column of unalloyed golden light, forcing everyone to look away. A wordless scream tore forth from his lips, and they covered their ears in turn. He alone managed to squint into the storm of light for a moment. Even then he had to look away for fear of going blind. And then it was done. Without warning, the light cleared. And they saw Morgoth, an omen no longer. Oh, his skin still had that gray tinge to it, but his horns were gone his swollen nose normal, tail having melted away. Tall and towering as ever the demigod sat up, the bloody tattered rags of his cloak barely preserving his modesty. He looked normal, tall, strong, handsome, even, every bit the warrior he'd been born as despite the curse of his birth. Nania preened. All better. Morgoth looked down at his hands. What is this? Godfrey, Melenia muttered. He truly looks like his father now, I fixed you, Uncle Morgoth, Nynaeus hopped in place. She smiled sweetly. The tree told me to. You're welcome. Morgoth stared at her for a long moment. Art thou a goddess? Nynaeus tilted her head, considering. Maybe? You must be. He choked, running hands over his now dehorned face. How else could you have done this? Naruto rolled his eyes. A thank Iowa would be nice. Morgoth looked to him now, the guest. You didn't let her behead me. Why? Don't ask me. He jerked his neck to the right, toward Nania. Ask the kid. At the last second she'd cried in his head, begging for mercy, and now he knew why. You were never loved by your family, were you? Or even the Erd tree? At the older man's flinch, he smiled. You're in luck. Our Halig tree, that is to say our Erd tree, is the only reason you're still alive. And we don't kill family unless we have to. But I attacked you, your child. Gave you a second chance, Buster. He spoke over him. Don't waste it. If you do, death will be a mercy. Now, I think you owe Millicent and the others an apology as well. The quintet of redheads crowded in, made curious. Good. Millicent approached first, and with her Mary, Maureen, Amy and Pollyanna grew bold enough to. Who are these? Those, Melania said stiffly, are your nieces, whom you nearly did harm to. Morgoth flinched. The mistake was mine. I was blind. Do not speak to me. Her piece said, the demigoddess turned and walked away, leaving them to it. My dear nieces, she didn't miss Morgoth's words behind. I am sorry I attacked your home. Sake? Nania lisped. But you have to be good now, okay? No more being bad. I yes. He heard him rasp. Of course. I shall serve thee well, goddess. Yay, group hug. Naruto didn't see what happened next. He didn't have to. There was no need. He already knew. Still, he clapped a hand over his mouth to hide his smile as he followed Melenia. Well, would you listen to that? Demigods could cry after all. Melenia confronted him soon thereafter. To his credit, Naruto didn't try to run away. He let her lead him to their chambers, closed the door behind him, locked it, and turned to face her. Bracing his back against the nearest wall and the bed beside it, he crossed both arms before his chest and stood his ground. Go on. His words were clipped. Say it. She didn't hesitate. You should have left me behead him. Really? Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose. Are we seriously having our first right right now? Over Morgod of all people? Yes, they were. It galled her more than words, but here they were, having it out. I suppose you think everyone deserves a second chance, don't you? That kind of thinking will get you killed, if you act as if every enemy has a chance at redemption. They don't. She paused, taken aback. What? Not everyone deserves a second chance, he rasped. Sometimes you have to put mad dogs down. Moog deserved what he got. If anyone else comes after us, they'll get theirs. Then why stop me from killing Morgoth? Naruto made a frustrated noise and paced away from her. Because he and I are the same. Nonsense. She scoffed, both alarmed and disgusted by the very notion. You are not the same. You are nothing alike. We are. 
His shout cut through her words, another hot knife severing her every argument. I was abandoned when I was young, too. I was nothing. No one paid me any mind. I lashed out with pranks and tricks, got as loud as I cowed, trying to make someone anyone. Look at me for the longest time. Sure, I wasn't thrown into the sewers to rot, but it damn well felt like it. Don't you see? Melenia most assuredly did not, and so waved him on. Morgoth is someone I could have become. It almost in another life I might have been just like him. Maybe worse, even, consumed by misery, pain and bitterness. He turned to her and she saw the pain in his eyes, the old shadows of his past clawing at him. When I looked at him, I just couldn't. Maybe it'll come back to bite me in the ass, but I didn't have it in me. How very noble of you. It's not noble. He looked away with a rueful laugh. If anything, it's selfish. In the world I'm building, no one will ever suffer like that again. His words stirred Malenia's emotions, mangling her self-control. Her throat went dry. It was a struggle to speak. It seems a dream. Can we not fight over this? His words were almost a plea. Please? I've lost enough friends and family. I can't lose you, too. Her body betrayed her, and she found herself stepping to him. You won't. From there, she kissed him. Slowly at first, giving hit he chanced to nullify the rot when she did, then quicker, showering him with kisses. Desire got the better of her as he reciprocated, and she found herself clinging to him, dipping her head to deepen the kiss. If it weren't for her curses, she would have jumped him long ago. She wanted to now. Gods, did she want to? More than anything. Would have, too, if it hadn't meant his certain death. Because this, this felt nice. Her body trembled in his arms and her skin ached, pining for his touch. She found herself taking hold of his hands, guiding them first to her hips, then her breasts, all too eager to be touched. The rot sang within her, eager for release. No, not not. Melenia suppressed it with a wince. Too late. She felt him smile against her lips. We should probably stop. Yes, she whispered back. We should. She didn't let go of him. Nor he her. Of one mind, they laid down on the bed. The mattress protested softly beneath their combined weight, but didn't break. Was this what the humans called cuddling? Melenia found herself fond of it. Most mocked her for her height, but Naruto cared not a jot. He let her arms, bought false and flesh, wrap around him. In return he reached up and removed her helm, setting it aside on a nearby table with great care. Golden eyes met blue. She dove forward, not to kiss him, but to press her forehead to his. What now? We clearly can't leave the greater will be if it's going to send armies after us. He muttered into the sheets. We just can't. It's too risky. Her hand traced his face. And I still wish to face Radon. Naruto shifted, turning to face her with a decidedly grim look. Malenia, no. Malenia, yes, she glowered at him in return, refusing to be swayed. It is on the way. Nice try, he booped her nose with one finger, drawing a startled noise from her. I can read a map, you know. It is entirely out of the way. She looked away with a pout. This is something I must do with or without you. You're really set on this, aren't you? She nodded. Her dreams had grown dark of late. She could not, in good conscience, leave her half-brother to suffer for her sins any longer. Naruto sighed. If we're considering this, we can't bring the girls with us. Malenia made a noise caught somewhere between a snarl and a sigh. His became a laugh. Hey, hey, did you just growl at me? A rare laugh burst from her lips, light and lilting. Not at you, beloved. At the idea of leaving them alone. They were her children, after all. They may not have sprang forth from her bosom, but they shared her blood. She had brought them into this world, in one manner or other. Little Nania was the best of her and Naruto but she wouldn't trade Millicent or any of the others for the world. You know, I don't like leaving them either. Her words drew a small smile to his face. Maybe there's a way to bring them with us, safely. Yes, that. Melania grabbed at his arms, pleased that they were of one mind on the matter. I'm sure we can find a way. They sat in comfortable silence for what? She wished it would it last forever. You know, Naruto sighed apropos of nothing, I never really thought I'd ever become a father. She scooted a little closer to him, hips brushing his. Nor I a mother. He laughed. And all without, you know. Melania's face flamed redder than her hair. 
She still had yet to experience that sweet pleasure, but she hoped for it still. One day she would be cured of this infernal rot, or, barring that, at least have some semblance of control over it without needing Naruto's constant intervention. And when that day came, well, best not think about it now. She'd nearly lost herself a moment ago. Such thoughts were too terribly distracting. Yes. She thanked her lucky stars every day for him, for the love and light he brought into her life. We must protect them. On that we agree. Here it was. An opening. This was her chance to push the envelope and tell him her plans for the realm. For once, she did. No one else will stand for the lands between. I see that now. Something must be done, lest our enemies come to us, and they may not be turned as Morgat was. His head bobbed. I agree, and I've got an idea. Odd, that he was agreeing rather readily all of a sudden. What did you have in mind? A few things, he began to count off the fingers of his good hand, none of them good for the greater will. How fast and far can you fly with those wings of yours? Malenia blinked at him. She blinked strong. You wish me to bloom? She nearly reared back out of his arms. Here? Now. Not in the tree. His words soothed the ragged bomb of her nerves. Above it. He poked a finger toward the window. In the clouds. We'll have you bloom up there where you can't harm anything. And how would we accomplish such a thing? Do you trust me? He asked. Implicitly. Great. He told her his plan. Here's what we'll do. It was remarkably blunt. But then again, so was he in all things. That's actually quite clever. She dared to take his hands in hers again. And dangerous. But I fail to see why you'd need me to bloom at all. Her intended gave her the answer to that too. Though mercifully it was far shorter. I think we should go on a god hunt. Clear out the rest of the bad guys, you know? Panic mounted in Melenia. He wanted to leave the tree. Granted, so did she, if only for a time. But this sounded like a more permanent arrangement. Her heart hitched painfully at the thought. Objectively, she could see why he wanted to strike now. Moog was dead. Morgat turned to their side. Mikuela would wake any day now. She would dot 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 the owl with what remained of Radon, one way or another. Truly, the path to Landell was clear. Once they uprooted Marika's false Erd tree and supplanted it with their own, they could usher in a new age. Who yet remained to oppose them? Renala? A broken shell of a woman locked away in Rhea Lucaria. Rikard? The fool lingered in Volcano Manor, feasting on tarnished. He would need to be dealt with. Rani, her sweet, treacherous sister came to mind, though she knew not where her she was hiding these days. There was the curious matter of that odd deathroot blight creeping through the lands, though she knew not the cause which need be investigated. And speaking of unknowns, the tarnished would resist any who tried to keep them from becoming Elden Lord, of course. And last, but not least, of the frenzied flame lurking in the dark depths of the capital. That must be quelled once and for all, lest a madman seize it. Yes, there was still much to do. But with Naruto, she could attend to those matters in a manner of days. It wouldn't take long, surely. Wait. An ugly thorn of memory caught at Melenia's heart. She'd forgotten someone. There was the still matter of Naruto quotas dot 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 fr in dot. She'd heard neither hide nor hair of this Sasuk for some time now. But he must be out there somewhere in the lands between. She would have known if a man like that died. So long as they lingered here, the chances of stumbling into him were non-existent. But if they left, if her beloved encountered him, he might wish to go home. No, no. She couldn't let that happen. And so he had to die. If she ever saw this Sasuk, she would slay him, sure as sin. Naruto would understand. Surely, he had to. She would make him. And she leaned back, hiding her the tempest of her thoughts behind an anxious smile. That might be unwise. I have no idea how the great runes would react with my body. Naruto missed her point, the silly, lovable boy. They could help stabilize it. She frowned. I do not wish to bring about an age of rot. You won't. He took her hand, her real hand, in his his. Do you trust me? Of course I do. I love you. The words burst out of her before she could think to barrel on. Um, that is to say. Blushing, she barreled on, not giving him a chance to answer, too terrified of what it might be. Where shall we go first? The faint pitter-patter of feet saved her from further embarrassment. Millicent barreled through the door. Mother, Miquela is awake. Malinia ran. 
she all but vaulted the steps, taking them three at a time to reach her brother's cocoon. Distantly, she was aware of Naruto running with her, but only in the vaguest sense. Nania was already there before them, all but bouncing on her feet. Didn't take much to see why. Someone stood before it, tall and slender, their back to her. Perhaps that was a mercy, because they were naked as a newborn. But no newborn was this. She recognized that golden white hair, but little else. Her mind all but fizzled at the sight of what should have been her brother, and yet Miquela was not as she knew. What on earth was that body? Brother. The stranger turned to face her fully, revealing golden eyes and a small smile. Their voice was music itself. Good morning, sister. Melenia absolutely choked. Behind her, Naruto took one look at Miquela and fell over laughing. Nanya clapped her hands. Pretty. This body will do. Miquela stretched one arm and swayed side to side, idly reveling in the freedom of such simple motion. After so long spent in that ghastly cocoon, the mere act of moving under one's own power was a blessing beyond measure. Sensation was sweet. Sight, touch, smell, taste, hearing, all of it glory in and of itself. There was just one small snag. Well, two, really. They were rather heavy on her chest. There was a third problem if one counted the distinct lack of something in her current form. Despite all the trials and tribulations, Miquela's mind remained its own, tried and true, untainted by Moog and the formless mother's influence. Not so the body. In his inane ambition, Moog had sought a new dynasty. A dynasty required children, and a womb with which to bear them. By his own meddling and the formless mother's interference, the mad omen had inadvertently broken the curse that besieged said body. At great cost, eternal youth was shattered. All that remained was eternal life. In trying to make him something he was not, said body had become something ghastly, been desecrated beyond repair. Melenia and Naruto had put a stop to that, and the Halictrino and Erdtree had saved his spirit by ushering in a rebirth. All traces of the formless mother were gone, wiped away with the old. Now here she stood, reborn, basking in the sun. How lovely the light felt after eons of darkness, Mildly amused, the demigod raised one arm and admired the slender expanse of a pale healthy hand. Good. No trace of that infernal curse remained. Power thrummed through every pore. She was restored. It was not quite the form she would have chosen, but in truth, it wasn't so much an annoyance as an inconvenience. After all, she had masqueraded as Saint Trina using magic in the past. This was simply a more permanent arrangement. She wasn't used to being quite so indefatigably tall. She'd have to accustom herself to this new form, train with it. Brother? Ah, but Molinia was looking to her, and she must attend. Sister now, I suppose. She pivoted on a bare foot to face her fully, revealing golden eyes and a small smile. Her voice was much as she remembered it, only softer. Good morning. Nynia clapped her hands and bounced up and down with a giddy grin. Pretty. Miquela smiled despite herself. Pretty, was it? Yes, she supposed that word would suffice. A cursory glance merely confirmed her initial assumption. She rather resembled mother as she had been pure and glorious before Godwin's demise broke her, body and soul. Merica had been beautiful once. Her current form mirrored that beauty tenfold. Ah, but poor Melenia. She looked so stunned. Is something wrong, sister? Melenia absolutely choked. Behind her, Naruto took one look at Miquela and fell over laughing. Melenia shot him a baleful glower, to no avail. In a matter of moments was all but crackling, clutching his sides, legs kicking at the air as he howled merrily. Naruto. I'm sorry, can't help it. Ah, this then was Naruto. She remembered possessing his body during that battle with Moog. How lovely to look upon him with her own eyes. Was it her imagination, or was he taller than she remembered? No, she wasn't imagining it at all. Miquela tilted her head and tugged a strand of golden hair out her eyes, considering. Oh. 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 So that's what was happening to him. Of course, it made a twisted sort of sense. She wasn't surprised. He had fought demigods and monsters and become Malenia's consort in all but name. That changed a man. Bonding to an Empyrean came with certain benefits, after all. Malenia hadn't noticed yet. She wondered when she would. He was rather handsome, Eno mustn't think that. He belonged to Melenia. It would be rude to intrude. That said, the merry blonde proved an able distraction. 
Malinia was so focused on him that she never saw Maquella coming. Bare feet strode briskly over fallen leaves, closing the distance between them in an instant. With a pleased hum, she drew her startled twin into a warm embrace. How nice it feels to finally hug thee. The Redi head tensed in her arms, yet for all her anxiety she didn't try to flee. Is that truly you? She patted the back of her head. My, but it was nice being tall. In the flesh. How? She coughed, sputtering a little. Why are you? Like this? The sound of her own laughter amused her even now. My former body was ruined beyond repair. I was reborn in the Halleck tree and granted a proper body reflecting my might. She turned a bemused glance on her sister's child, who had shimmed up to their side. I believe your little one is to thank for that. Nanya chirped happily. Yup. Proper, is it? Melenia looked oddly sullen. They're bigger than mine. Maquella blinked, somewhat taken aback by the words. Pardon. Only then she looked down. Step back now. Ah, of course. She'd no clothes. A brisk breeze blew through the hallig tree. I suppose I cannot walk about like this now, can I? Someone dee dee a light blue cloth over her from behind. Here, Naruto coughed into a fist, studiously avoiding looking anywhere but at her eyes. You can have my cloak. Don't really need it. My thanks, friend. Miquela released her dazed sister and offered him her hand. It's good to finally meet you face to face. And you, more or less. He returned the handshake briskly. There a particular reason why you look like this? It's something of a long story. One she did not care to repeat. Thank you for looking after my sister. I owe you a debt, one I may never be able to repay. Then don't. Melenia laughed ruefully behind him. The sound and his words brought Maquella up short. Pardon? I didn't do all this for a debt or because I wanted to be repaid. As she looked on, the baffling blonde grinned, jerked his hand back, and thrust a thumb against his chest. I did it because it was the right thing to do. Such a noble sentiment. He believed every word of it, the lovable lad. Her lips twitched. She couldn't herself. She laughed. What's so funny? You truly are a remarkable being. She wiped a tear from the corner of her eye before it could fully form inside. I almost wish I'd met you first. No, she amended, sensing Molinia's suddenly intense state. Perhaps that is selfish of me. In any case, I'll do everything I can to aid you. To accomplish that, she would have to grant Molinia's dearest wish. Radon must be dealt with, and her trauma with him, or her twin would never be able to move on. After that, the rot could be dealt with. She had not been idle while she was trapped in the cocoon. She'd heard everything, seen everything. Malinia kicked at the ground like the child she no longer was. Miquela, you've only just awakened. There is no need to strain yourself. There is a need. She interjected gently. I would be delighted to help you save this world. There is little time and much to do. She heard footsteps racing down the star ears. It was her only warning. Then they were upon her. Mary, Maureen, Amy, and of course Pollyanna. She remembered their names well. Evidently, they remembered her. They were certainly happy to see her. New Auntie. Resistance was pointless. The quartet swarmed her, and she went down, falling in a tangle of limbs as her nieces babbled happily. Millicent wasn't quite so hasty and proved more reserved. She lingered near the edges with a longing smile, one that did nothing to stop her sisters. It certainly didn't stop Nania from jumping into the giggling dogpile. Well, she'd always wanted a large family. Huh. Now there was an idea. They surely had enough now. Why not? This seemed as good a time to broach the subject as any. Miquela struggled upright, propping herself up on one elbow. Do you wish to face Radon now? Malinia perked up. Naruto sighed. Out of the fire and into the frying pan, eh? I'll happily watch over these five for you, if that is your concern. Miquela made no effort to hide her smile. Perhaps this was a little manipulative of her, but it was for the best. They shall be safe with me and Morgoth to say nothing of Loretta. We shall protect the Halleck tree while you are away. Five voice rose indignantly. What? Without us. Not a chance. No, I'm going, do. You cannot be serious. One voice had been silent amongst them. Sure enough, Miquela looked down and found Nania stared back up at her most defiantly. 
She was, in a way, a little goddess of her own, still young in her power, but so eager to change to world. She would go far once the greater will was dealt with. Indeed, given time she might even supplant it properly. The lands between could certainly do better than that meddling space squid. Yes, the more she dwelt on it, the more she liked the idea. She was already strong enough to cure omens, as evidenced by Morgoth's miracle. And she'd grow stronger yet. Better to give this one room to grow, rather than limit her potential. I take it you wish to join them? Nania needn't be told twice. She was already out the door like a bolt of lightning, her target the stairway. No doubt she wanted to pack for the journey. Naruto cried out. Oi, now wait just a second, you. She most assuredly did not. Quick as a flash, she was back again, a little brown pack slung over her shoulders, eyes sparkling. Ready. You can go now, if you wish. Malenia winced. It would be a long journey. No, it wouldn't. Miquela held up a hand. I happen to know a rather useful spell. I'd be happy to send the others over once the danger has passed. Here, let me show you. Naruto swore aloud. Now wait just a second. She didn't give him time to protest. Light shimmered. Reality reluctantly reasserted itself. Naruto dearly wished it hadn't, because with it came nausea. He retched, and Kurama with him. Never again, he groaned, wiping his mouth with a battered sleeve. No more fast travel. We're walking next time. Malenia massaged the small of his back, rubbing small circles against it. There, there. He punched the red soil and uttered an unprofessional oath. I can't believe I'm even considering this. She delivered a quick kiss to his cheek. It is for the best. What is the saying you use? Better to rip the bandage off rather than let the wound fester. It took more effort to climb to his feet than he cared to admit. That's not it at all. Against his better judgment, he looked up. Caled was very red. By luck or design, Miquela's spell had dropped them near the castle in question, but it did little to distract from the horrors of the continent. It was, in every way, rotten. They weren't even near the worst of it, but he saw the horrors from here, the massive shapes of beasts loping across tainted soil, the awful fungi straining toward the sky. Malenia looked stricken at the sight of it, on the verge of saying something. We. Nania was their salvation. The little redhead came crashing down and landed on his back in a shimmer of golden light. That was fun, again, again. Malenia quirked a brow at her. Where are your sisters? Surely they mean to join us. They're coming later. Miquela's tired, said she needs a few minutes. Very well, then. Let us prepare for their arrival. Together, their little family approached Radon's castle. None challenged them, well, not until they reached the gate. Movement on the walls caught their eye. Figures shuffled to and fro. Orders were exchanged in hushed tones. Hold, a deep voice overshadowed them all, braying from the battlements, harsh and flinty. You approach Redmain Castle, identify yourself at once. Melenia looked to him for strength, took a deep breath, and steeled herself. I am Melenia, Blade of Miquela. An angry cry went up from the castle. Naruto tensed, expecting a hair of fire or a torrent of arrows. They received neither. Instead, a man leaped down to confront them. He landed nimbly, alighting in a pointed crouch. Naruto idly noted his odd armor and the strange bearded mask he wore. Then his attention was decidedly elsewhere, because the old geezer straightened up, ripped the flamberge sword from his back, and thrust it at them both. You have some nerve coming back here, which? Melenia smiled softly. Sadly. Hello, Jaren. That's which hunter Jaren to you, woman. He suspected the warrior might have spat were it not for his mask. This my castle, and you are not welcome here. State your purpose and be gone. Naruto quirked a brow. Why call her a witch? The older man scoffed. That is what she is. And who are you, boy? One of her servants. Melenia stood a little straighter. He is my consort. Ha! A bitter bark of laughter burst from him. A fine jest. Tell me now, and tell me true, or I'll run you through. Who are you? Naruto took a deep breath for calm, failed, crackled his knuckles, and stepped up beside her. The guy who's about to kick your ass if you don't cut the crap. No. Melenia interposed herself between the two of them before they could come to blows. Shame. He would have liked to smack some sense into this one. 
I'm here to help Radon, Jaren. I wish to make amends. Laughter answered her, sharp and bitter. You think you can, do you? Melenia looked to him, golden eyes crinkling ever so slightly. If I cannot, he most certainly will. Naruto winced inwardly. Sure, no pressure. The old witch hunter wasn't so easily swayed. And if he recovers his wits enough to demand your life? That, I cannot give. She amended with a grimace. I have a family now. Children who depend upon me. I cannot afford to die here. I will give him the satisfaction of a proper fight. Jaren made a baffled noise. Gods be good, you really have changed, haven't you? I'd not be here if I hadn't. HRRMPH, he grunted. The Malenia I knew cared only for victory. What has changed? Nania poked her head over his shoulder and waved. Hello. Jaren recoiled. A child? He noticed how much she resembled them. It was impossible not to. The little child of the tree was the best of them, even if she didn't have their blood. The sight of her smote Jaren into silence and rendered his acerbic insults moot. He almost wished he could see the man's face, but the sheer shock radiating from him would have to do. At length, the man's masked visage turned back to regard the Manu. You're in love. He almost sounded surprised. Malenia didn't deny it. I hadn't thought it possible for you to bear children. Malenia bridled. Nania pouted. Mini. Naruto hissed. Careful now. A pang of burning silence stretched between them. Jaren broke it with a weary, forlorn sigh. You ask for much. Malenia sighed. I don't ask for your forgiveness. Only a chance to make amends. We will not help you. Yo. But neither shall we impede you. The old warrior continued to pace. If you think you can face the mightiest demigod of the Shattering and survive, then be my guest. But know this. He thrust a finger up into her face, cutting off anything she might have said. Should you bloom here again, there will be nowhere you can run, nowhere you can hide, that I will not find you. Do not test me. Understood. Good. He looked back to the castle and raised his voice. Open the gate. Malenia shot him a rueful glance. Naruto returned it. They trekked up the steps to meet destiny. Red sand. Corpses as far as the eye could see. Weapons piled, I amidst heaps of broken bones and rotten flesh. And the smell. By the sage, the smell. His eyes watered. His nose burned. The very air seared his lungs and made it difficult to breathe. In an instant he understood. This wasn't ground zero. Not the place where Melenia had first bloomed and everything had gone terribly, horribly wrong, but it was tainted in its own way. The soil here had rotted away to sand, leaving the air wretchedly humid. Even the seashore itself wasn't unaffected. He could see grasping tendrils reaching out into the water, only narrowly rebuffed by the ocean's embrace. Only the salt water remained pure. Nania whimpered a little and clung onto his back. This is a bad place. Naruto agreed. His gorge rose at the sight. What, is this? Someone gagged. It wasn't him. He looked back to find Molinia wiping her mouth. She retched once more, tugged a hip flask from her belt, drank quickly, then spat upon the ground. I didn't know, she muttered. I hadn't thought. I never meant. This is my doing. I could not bear the sting of defeat. And I did this. I destroyed a good and honorable man. I'm sure you didn't mean to. I did. She turned a miserable gaze upon him. I knew what I was doing. I wanted to win, no matter the cost, no. I didn't even consider the cost. Where is he? Strange, she frowned. He must be here, but where? Nania pointed up at the horizon. There he is. Naruto's blood ran cold. He turned to follow her finger. There was something in a sky. A distant speck of light, shining amongst the heavens. A faint whistling noise reached their ears. No, surely he wouldn't. Who was he kidding? Radon absolutely would. He thrust Mania at Melenia and shoved his family away. Back. A burning shadow fell upon them. His hands snapped upward in a golden blur. Twin massive swords crashed down like a falling star. Naruto didn't see anything else beyond that blur of black, didn't feel anything else beyond pain. He was too busy grabbing the mighty weapons, holding on for dear life as the sand cratered underfoot. Blinking the spots from his vision, he finally laid eye upon his attacker. Said attacker howled wordlessly in his face. 
a massive behemoth of a man leered down at him clad in mighty armor, pale face drawn in a rictus of a snarl. Rot clung to him like a miasma, his great back pierced with countless weapons, legs rotted away, his hair a tangled red man billowing behind him. He pushed down now, trying to break him, make him bend the knee. Not today. Off, he flung his arms up and out with a shout, breaking the stalemate. Radon stumbled back, swords in hand, to loom over them. Oh, bugger, you didn't say he was that big. Malenia, 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 -ay. I think he recognizes you. All hell broke loose. His mind was returning. Radon dearly wished it hadn't. Life had been so much simpler when he was a mindless, raving lunatic caring only for his next meal. Little more than a mad dog who felt only hunger. No sadness and sorrow, no pain, no lingering thoughts gnawing his tortured soul to pieces. And yet he felt it now, indeed. The fact he even could suggested some small semblance of sanity must have returned to him at some point during the brawl when he wasn't paying attention. For a brawl this was, a battle for the ages, and one he was winning. He took great pride in that particular point. It was seven against one, after all. Eight if one counted the strange little girl who kept casting those darn healing incantations. Her spells kept his foes on their feet, even him when she missed. Honestly, he had no idea what to make of that one. He'd left her alone thus far, but the others. Aogni bloomed up his thigh as a scythe raked his knee. He countered with a savage snarl and backhanded his adversary away, only for another to perch upon his back and bury her spear in his shoulder. Even as she did, another drove their daggers into his left leg, while a fourth raked her curved swords across the other, drawing fresh blood. Pain smashed his senses down and maddened him once more. He gave his back a mighty lurch and cast them off like so much chaff, sending them tumbling amongst one another. Despite being hideously wounded and rotting from within, he still possessed every bit of his speed and skill, and he wasn't afraid to use either to get at them. A golden flash swept them to safety before he could hope to run them down with Leonard. See? An unfamiliar voice sighed behind him. Told you he was too much for them. Radon rounded on him, but he was too fast, and his blades went wide. Clenched knuckles swung in at his face with fearsome speed, forcing him to block for his very life. The punch rang his blades like a bell and his arms besides. His head snapped back, opening him up to the one-armed warrior to leap in and go to town. An open palm pummeled his stomach once, twice, thrice, blasting the breath and more of the scarlet rot from his body each time until finally, Radon doubled over and vomited more of it, clutching at his dented gut. Another golden palm slapped his armor, and then his foe was past him, grinning like a maniac. That's right, he cackled after him. Focus on me. It must be the blonde one again. Every time that one laid a hand on him, every time he hit him, he felt his rotattled psyche begin to heal alongside his body. With each moment that passed he grew stronger as his body began to return to its prime. His inside still ached from the rot within, but already he was a far cry from the mad dog he'd once been. Though most thoroughly exhausted, the little redhead cheered in the distance. Go, Papa. He heard the telltale crackle of movement behind him and pivoted, narrowly evading a punch that would have knocked him clean out. His mighty start scourge greatswords descended like twin hammers, only for the blonde bastard to catch one in each hand. The dunes dented beneath his feet, and he grunted in pain, but held true, uncaring as the blades bit into his palms. And for the first time since their battle had begun Radon smiled. Yes, at last. Here was a proper fight. And yet despite that satisfaction, he was still furious. Because you see, with a return of his wits came true recognition. Enough to know the wretched witch standing before him. Because you see, he saw her. He saw her. He remembered her. She of the red hair. She who was responsible for all his pain, all his decay, his trauma, all his rot and rage. There she was, striding toward him now, cresting a dune, blade in hand. Her golden eyes met his. When had she regained her vision, oh, it didn't matter. Radon, please. Her very voice tickled his senses. Enough is enough. If you must fight someone, let it be me. Oh yes, he remembered her. In spite of the years, the decades, the centuries, he'd never forgotten her face. He never could. Even in his ravaged state, he remembered. Her. 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 He'd carried her on his shoulders when she was small and led her through Landau. Helped her braid her hair as it grew long. 
sat by her side and held her as she wept and lamented the loss of her right arm, then her legs, even her eyes. Year after year, she lost her very body to the rot within her, and still he stood by her side, as an older brother should. He had defended her honor despite father's protests, stood for her, when her own flesh and blood wanted to banish her from the capital due to her curse. From the moment of her birth, he had been her champion, forever and always, watching over this willful who reminded him so very much of Rani. And how had she repaid his kindness? By attacking him, rotting him, turning him into this. This was all her fault. She had done this to him. Blood demanded blood. Vengeance. Malinia. He smacked the blonde aside and roared forward. She met him with her hated weight foul dance. Dozens of wounds bloomed across his body, but he was prepared for them. He barreled through her storm of strikes and lunged at her anew, blades blurring, body awash in a violet gravity magic. His half-sister parried the first strike, then the second, followed by the third, not so the fourth and fifth. He struck her in a brutal corkscrew of a crosscut that bit into her collarbone, shattered her false arm, and sent her flying across the dunes in a shower of blood. Radon paused, his rage brought up short by such weakness. She was slower, her skills nowhere near as sharp as they'd been on that final fateful day here in Kaled. Confusion quelled his ire, if only for a moment. Was this truly Malinia? A pointless question. Of course it was. But who were those girls with her? He didn't recognize them. He could see the quintet over the next rise, ready to rush him again. He knew their faces not. Yet their hair. That hated red hair, no. It didn't matter. He was strong. They were weak. He would win. There was no question. Victory was his. He would crush them and wait. What was that noise? Scowling, he pivoted in search of it. He needn't look all that far. All right, pal. A low voice rumbled behind him. You got your free hit in. I've had just about enough of you. Much to his annoyance, the blonde one was up again, hand in the air like he just didn't care. A sphere of purest blazing blue loomed over his outstretched palm. It was quite large and growing larger. Almost as large as him, in fact, no, larger now, casting him in his shadow. His eyes widened, a FL seeker of fear overtaking him for the first time in centuries as the snarling sphere dwarfed him completely. No, there was nothing he could not defeat, and this spell would be no different. He was General Radon and Super Ultra Big Racingen. Why was ground? His addled mind sputtered in fits and failed starts, unable to comprehend why he was suddenly sprawled amidst the dunes of Kaled, what was going on, or why his spine ached. How had the blonde one gotten behind him so quickly? He hadn't even seen him move. Dazed, he raised his head in desperate search of his noble steed. Leonard lay slumped yards away, unhurt but wheezing for air. Good, good. At least he was safe. He had half a second to see before he got jumped again. Was that the saying the kids used these days? It rather felt like it. Those annoying redheads attacked him again, not with their weapons, but their hands. They grabbed at his limbs and tried to prevent his wounded body from rising. Indignant, he thrashed at them. What manner of merry madness was this? Did these children truly think they could restrain him? Him. Of all people. Don't kill him. Just hold him down. Golden eyes sparked with renewed rage. So that was their game. They thought to capture him? Did they? Never. He would not be taken alive. They would not lay him low. He would not lose his mind once more. He bucked and burst to his feet, thrashing about himself with a will. One was kicked away, two were bowled over by his charge, while the fourth flung herself flat and tumbled between his legs to avoid losing her head to his blades. He brought his blades down again and again, striking madly, for to stop was to be captured again, and he would not allow. Stop at once. Remarkably, the fifth did not flee, she shouted at him. Radon paused, taken aback by the sudden outburst of sheer indignation. The blonde one shouted at her in return. Millicent, what are you doing? Get back here. Uncle, please. She ignored him, raised both arms, real and prosthetic to ward him off. We mean you no harm. Radon's mind fizzled again for an altogether different reason. Uncle? The word was heavy on his rot-laden tongue, his jaw stiff, his throat dry from eons of senseless snarling. Uncle? Oh. 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 Realization broke in a bitter dawn. His blades felt heavy in his grasp for perhaps the first time in his life. No wonder they looked like Melania. 
These were her children. He looked upon them now and saw the resemblance to their mother, not just in their face, but their faces, their eyes. These were his kin, his nieces. Do you see, now? Radon rounded on the voice. How in blazes was she still alive? Against all odds, Melenia had dragged herself up somehow, and though dazed with her false arm forever shattered, she still stood tall, gripping her broken blade in her off hand. The blasted blonde one must have spent all this time healing her wounds. How else would she be able to stand? We haven't come here to kill you. Had that been my intent, I would have simply bloomed again, rather than allowing my consort to restore your mind. The blonde one grinned and mad a cooing noise her way. Ah, you say the nicest things. She tilted her head. I swear, if my body wasn't rotten, I would ride you until you saw stars. Naruto's face went red. So did Melenia's a moment later as she too realized the weight of her words. And on that lovely note, Radon's mind shorted out again. Consort. By the greater will, what had he missed? Melenia cast her broken blade aside and knelt before him on her false legs. I'm sorry, Radon, for all of it. What, what was he to say to that? What could he possibly say? Where had all his anger gone? And then that little redhead from before scurried out from between her parents' legs. Hi, she chirped up at him happily. I'm Nania, nice to meet you. How could one possibly be angry with her? Radon looked upon her and felt his nerve falter anew. A child. Oh, gods, Melenia really did have children. This one must be the youngest. He could see the best of her parents in her. She looked upon him without fear. No, that wasn't quite right. This one didn't seem to fear anything. She scooted up to him and beckoned with a little hand. He found himself leaning down to regard her. So very small, this one. Was she going to attack him? In the end, his fears were unfounded as she she laid a pale palm upon his face. With her gentle touch, the rot within him began to ebb. It was too much. He hadn't expected an apology, much less this. He'd thought they'd come to kill him but they hadn't. Instead the family of eight crowded around him. Some of them actually dared to hug him, heedless of his previous aggression. And with their courage, the rest of them gave in and began to embrace him, chattering happily. Could all truly be forgiven so easily? He scarcely heard their words as his resolve began to crumble. A low, warbling noise fled from his dry and cracked lips. It's okay. Nynia closed her eyes and pressed her forehead to his towering face speaking with great wisdom for one so small. You're going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. How easy it was to believe her. With those words, the dam shattered within the old general's weary, tortured heart. Radon broke down and wept. Awawa, he's just a big softy. Uncle, uncle, pick me up. No, me, me. Me first. Me. Naruto watched the strange scene unfold before him with a small smile eyes half-lidded in amusement as his daughters crawled all over an increasingly baffled Radon. The recently recovered general found himself at a loss, and as such, quite powerless to refuse the demands of his needy nieces. They wanted all the hugs, all the kisses, all the attention. Any attempts to overrule them were doomed to failure. He knew from experience. It was difficult enough to tell Nania no on a good day, but to fend off five others at the same time. Yeah, no. Poor bastard never stood a chance. Almost made him wish he had a camera, you know? Darn shame those didn't exist in this world. Malenia tilted her head beside him. He's getting swarmed. So he is. He chuckled at the man's plight. Shouldn't we, well, do something? Nah, a wave of hands soothed her fears. Girls will be girls. Let them have their fun. Nania yawned blearily in his arms, echoing that statement as she tucked her head into his chest. Small wonder she was sleepy. After all, she'd used a fair bit of her power to help him cleanse the rot within Radon. Little Tyke must be tuckered out. Alas, the same couldn't be said for her sisters. Not the beard. A rather undignified squawk echoed throughout the square, reminding them that Radon wasn't the only one trapped down there. Uncle Jaren was utterly at a loss as well, which was rather amusing in and of itself, given he'd lost that ridiculous helmet of his which meant everyone could not only look him in the eye without laughing themselves silly, but tug on his rather prominent facial hair as well. The wizened old fellow had tried to intervene on the general's behalf some time ago, only to find himself dragged down by the rambunctious redheads as well. Ah, well, if it kept him from tearing into Melenia, all the better. 
Much of the tension between the two groups seemed to have evaporated overnight. But it wasn't gone, not entirely. Melenia remained anxious to go about righting the rest of her wrong, forthwith. Credit where it was due there, she was dutiful and nothing else. In her heart of hearts, she genuinely wished to make amends. I'm going to talk to him. Not that kind of amends. Bad idea. I wouldn't advise that idea and she's gone. He slapped a palm to his forehead and, careful not to jostle mania in his arms, raced after her. Too little, too late. She'd already reached Radon by the time he thought to intervene. Worse, she laid a hand on the big oaf's knee, practically demanding his attention. Brother, can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Radon fell silent for a long moment, the grim look on his face somewhat juxtaposed to all his nieces hanging off him. Millicent and the others were silent as the grave, for now the jolly general's countenance could have been carved from stone. Forgive? He levered himself upright, looming over her. Forgive, you. A massive hand rose, and she flinched despite herself. Forgive you, for all that you've done. Naruto tensed, ready to spring into action, just in case the general had a change of heart. There was no need. Radon's heavy hand did indeed descend as he feared, but not to attack. He ruffled the Empyrean's hair gently yet deliberately, frizzing her long scarlet locks, as an elder brother might their younger sister. Right, he was older than her, wasn't he? Perhaps that was why Melenia made a startled noise, one that only multiplied as the great Goliath reeled her forward into a one-armed embrace. There is nothing left for me to forgive, little sister. Her face crumpled. But everything I did has already been forgiven, he replied. Naruto moved forward. Let it be. Kurama's response stayed his feet. It's high time someone lanced the poison from this wound. It shouldn't be forgiven, Melenia tried to reel back, but his grasp on her was ironclad and she could only glare up at him. Not so easily. I destroyed Kaldi. I'm a monster. I... Who decided that? Radon's voice rumbled over hers, deep and resonant. You're a monster? You deserve to suffer? Kaled is my domain. I decide such things. He fell seek at her forehead with brisk dispatch when she made to protest again, drawing a petulant whine from her lips. And I say you're forgiven. After all, you wish to make amends and correct your mistakes, no? She dared a tremulous nod. Then all is well, sister. Malinia sniffled, warbled once, then burst into tears. Actual tears. Naruto hadn't though she was capable of them anymore. Not like this. Not to this extent. They flowed freely now, pouring down her face in silvery cascade as she crumpled to her knees in a ruined heap as she wailed. I'm sorry. She babbled, clutching at herself with both arms. I am so, so, so terribly sorry for all of this. Her daughters closed ranks around her with Radon to embrace her bless their simple souls. Naruto moved to join them, and hesitated. Did he have any right to be here? His face closed down at the intrusive thought. He suddenly felt like an intruder here, witness to something he shouldn't be privy to. This was a family matter, something that occurred long before he found himself in the lands between. Maybe he should just let them have this, give them their space, you know? Papa. Startled, he looked down to find a sleepy Nania tugging at his sleeve. He set her down for a moment, then swiftly rubbed his face with his sleeve. Huh. We did a good thing, right? He looked back to Melenia, still bawling her eyes out, but not as loudly now. Ah, he understood. Those were tears of joy, not sadness and sorrow. Happy tears. He never though to see the day. Maybe, maybe he'd helped after all. If he hadn't blundered his way into the Halig tree all those months ago, none of this would have been possible. Yeah. He felt his own eyes start to sting a little. We definitely did. His daughter made a pleased noise at that. In that case, pick me up again. Need, greedy girl. She didn't have to hop in place like that to get his attention, but she did so anyway. And the moment she did, he just had to retrieve her, because he couldn't bear to see that little pout. The very instant he did, she nestled herself against his chest and closed her eyes, content with her place in the world. By the log, he felt so tired. Maybe it was time for a nap of his own. He shook his head and walked away, letting the family have their moment. Malenia found Naruto hiding atop the wall. Tucked into a corner, Nadia nestled in his arms, sound asleep. The sight nearly made her start weeping again. It didn't feel fair sometimes, just how incredibly blessed she'd been these last few months. She'd always craved a family of her own, 
and now that desire had been granted an oar. When she looked at Naruto now, her heart fluttered like some flowery maiden, not that of a warrior, and maybe, just maybe, that was okay. Why did you run away, earlier? He looked up, careful to keep his voice low, lest he wake their daughter. Just thinking. She sat beside him without invitation. Might I intrude upon your thoughts? His smile hurt her heart. You know you don't gotta ask. My apologies, old habits. She looked down to Nania, sound asleep in his arms, and marshaled her thoughts. You should be down there with us, and thank you. Her whiskered warrior made a confused noise. For what? I've waited so long for someone like Yana. Wait. She shook her head, dispelling his dark doubts. That's not quite it. I've waited waited so long for you, carried on for you, lingering in my dreams to avoid the pain of being alone. And now I never will be again. It's finally started to sink in for me. His visage softened. Malinia. No, let me finish before I lose my nerve. A hand touched her bosom squeezing into a fist just above it. Before you came along, I was nothing. No, less than nothing. A chuckle shook her resolve. That even possible? Let me finish. I just wanted to say thank you. She took a hold of his hand with her false limb to avoid hurting him, and gingerly brought it up to her cheek. For this, for all of it, for finding me, for loving me, for saving me. Thank you. How she wished she could feel his fingers within her own, she didn't miss the flash of sudden trepidation in his eyes. You make it sound like you're going somewhere. As he would, someday, if he kept searching for his friend. The inevitable loomed large between them. No, he couldn't leave. He must never, ever leave. Because if he left, she would surely shatter. And then the rot would creep back in. Her hand tightened around his. Not if I have anything to say about it. I good. He released a breath. That's good had me worried there, for a second. As he had worried her, it seemed so simple, and yet, his hand touched hers. Malinia, a eh? mother, Millicent hurtled up the stairs and around the bend before he could finish giving voice to her hope. There you are. Her brow furrowed. What is it now? I nearly forgot, she darted forward, something held in her hand. Miquela wanted me to give you this. In all the chaos, it slipped my mind. She held out her hand, revealing a pale golden handkerchief, and there, within was a needle, unlike any they had ever seen. It won't last very long, she babbled shyly. Maybe a day or so at most, but you should be able to touch. Molinia ripped it from her grasp and slammed it into her side. It slid between her ribs with ease and alongside it came sensation. Was that the right word? All her senses, once muted and numb, woke up again. She felt alive, awake, aware as she hadn't been in years. Looking down at her hands, she glanced about. Did it work? Naruto was watching her closely. Closely indeed. Very. One way to find out. Bracing herself for failure, she touched his face, gently at first, ready to draw back if he winced at all in pain. When he didn't, her gaze narrowed, eyes becoming molten slits of purest amber as she leaned in. She wasn't sure who kissed who first. Only that his lips were on hers, and suddenly all her worries about him leaving seemed so small, somehow. The worries of tomorrow could wait. This was far, far, far more important. Desire seized her in its gluttonous grip, passion restrained for many months now surging to the fore. Millicent gulped and swept Nania out of Naruto's arms. I'll just take her to bed then, shall I? Malinia drew back and inhaled slowly, taking a deep, shuddering breath. You'd best. Her dear daughter nodded and scarpered for the stairs in a bolt of scarlet silk. Only then did Malinia dare round on Naruto. Can we go to bed, now? He laughed, face red. If that's all right with you. The last of her restraint shattered. Permission granted. She stepped in and drove her lips against his with furious passion, all but crushing him against the nearest wall she could find. Her bosom pressed into his chest. Wings bloomed behind her back sending beautiful baleful butterflies flitting through the air in a storm of noise. She paid them no heed, because there was no need, because the rot did not bloom with them, because he was holding her, returning her affection with slow, gentle sincerity, kisses so sweet that she wanted to cry. It was too much. She lost herself. A hand flitted out, tearing his shirt away in a shower of fabric. She pressed her lips to his with but a single thought. 
mine. Melenia awoke feeling delightfully, deliciously sore. Realization crept back in with the dawn, and belatedly as she lay there, sprawled across the shears, she realized where she was, what they had done, what exactly happened. A fierce, fiery flush crept up the back of her neck and seeped into her cheeks. It seemed the needle had done its work. She could no longer feel it lodged between her ribs, which was alarming, but to be expected. What had Millicent said? Miquela's needle would last an entire day at most. Then it had done its work well indeed. But why was the bed empty? She sat up, clutching the sheets to her bosom, searching for a... There he was. Out the corner of her eye she caught sight of Naruto's red, blistered back as he tugged on his breeches and trousers. Her breath hitched once, then again now as he pivoted to tug on on a red tunic. She glimpsed a score of vivid luridly. Crimson marks on his chest. The scarlet rot was not so easily denied, it seemed. Guilt hitched in her heart despite her best efforts. Of Kurs, she must have held on to him while they slept. The pain must be intense. Did I hurt you? Nah. He craned his neck her way, realizing she was awake. It tickles. I scalded your back and chest. Only a little, and I'll heal. He winked her way. Don't worry, you were the little spoon. Heat flooded her face. Naruto. What? He laughed merrily, cheeks flushed. I've wanted to use that line forever. And besides, he looked away, scratching his cheek. It was nice. Was it, now? Melenia preened a little, unable to speak, but guilt momentarily assuaged. He was her first, as she was his. Her first, everything. The thought made her squirm like some blushing maiden. Even if the needle hadn't lasted all that long, to have a moment of intimacy amongst all this dot 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 it warmed her more than words. Did you just giggle? She blinked quickly. I know not what you mean. He squinted her way. I'm pretty sure you giggled just now. I made no such noise. He grinned for a moment, then winced. So, are you good? Wonderful. She laid a hand back on the bed. I really am sorry for hurting you. Don't be her consort said beside her and dared to deliver a quick peck to her cheek, despite the pain it might have caused him. Like I said, it was worth it. Although, he paused, touching a finger to his chin as though just now remembering something. Miquela arrived while you were out. Said Morgoth is guarding the halig tree for us. Melenia froze. Where did she? Go, Naruto finished. She's talking to Radon. Was pretty damn insistent about it. Melenia winced a little. Naruto noticed it. You all right? Not entirely. She averted her eyes from his, feeling more than a little shamefaced. When I came to Kaled, I had another purpose, one I didn't reveal to you, plans that. He pressed a firm finger to lips. The past is the past. But I don't care. It's who you are now that matters. She tried again, and he shushed her. You're trying to be better now, right? And succeeding, somehow. So you say. I do say, he kissed her and desire sparked. In her anew. There's no point in telling me it now. You already apologized to Radon. He kissed her again. Gods, it made her squirm. She wanted him to pin her down again, lock her arms above her head and gods. You shouldn't, she moaned a little, rubbing her bare thighs together. The needle's worn off. I might melt your face. Her paramour leaned away, rubbing his numbed lips between two fingers. So worth it. Miquela better hurry up and make a proper needle. She wanted a cure. Now. A startled shout arose from the courtyard, capturing their attention. Seems she found Radon. Naruto blew out a bemused sigh. I hope they're happy. This time, Malenia managed to suppress her wince. Ah, those two. Radon would certainly be shocked by Miquela's new form and her new assets. Well, she had already played her part in that mad menagerie, and Caled had paid the price, but no more. They were more than welcome to sort out their feelings among themselves. Who knew? Radon might be more inclined toward her twin now. He'd ever had a thing for blonde women. Which left them to their order. This era was. What exactly? Was it hers? Melenia didn't know. Miquela seemed content to let her be happy, and she was glad to be happy, make no mistake. But she couldn't help but wonder what her twin was planning. Perhaps Miquela had chosen to embrace the era, she and Naruto were working towards, she couldn't say. That frightened her. The idea of Miquela discarding everything. 
It was anathema to her. She would put Caleb to rights, no matter what miscreant stood in her way. She owed the lands between that much. After, she would see what came after. She would not sacrifice her girls any more than she wished to see Maquella fall to pieces. But those were matters for later. Naruto leaned back suddenly, commanding her attention. You heading down? Jaren's cooking breakfast. He makes some mean waffles. She glanced past him. I'll join you shortly. Great. A quick kiss, he seemed bolder about that now that they'd finally laid with one anather and he was gone, racing down the stairs to look after their girls. Melenia watched him go, waited a moment more, and began the long labor of dressing herself. A minute passed. Another. Now. Yet a third. The air shimmered behind her. I knew it. She'd been lurking all this time. Her senses were sharper than they'd ever been. She'd not been wrong. Donning her helm, she turned to face the intruder. To what do I owe this visit, sister? Rani raised her hands to stave off an imminent assault. One she wouldn't survive. I would have words with you. How frail she looked in that puppet body of hers. How she longed to shatter her once and for all. It was tempting. Might she cross the distance between them in time? What would happen if she lopped that one-eyed head from her shoulders? Would she die? Or would her spirit merely pass on and possess another body? Must not kill. Naruto may have ignored Rani, but he surely wouldn't dismiss that kind of racket. He would ask questions, questions she wasn't prepared for. Damn her. Bold words, coming from the witch who begot this madness in the first place. She clc ked her tongue at the cheeky churl. Oh, yes, I know about the Knight of Black Knives. You were its architect. Rani's gaze cooled. Then you know of what I am capable. I would ask you to stay out of my way. You come here, into your brother's own home, and threaten me. Not a threat, sister. Her sibling held up one hand. Quote, a warning. I wish no more death between us. Has there not been enough? She lifted her chin. And what warning might that be? Rani considered her for a moment. Keep away from the realm of shadows and the Erd Tree. I have plans for them. Bold of her to say such. I shall only say this once. I have found a champion of mine own, one well beyond yours. Do not test me in this, sister. Leave Kaled. Stay away. Keep to your tree. Do not usurp this age for yourself. Her face closed down, a bitter chill overtaking her azure visage. Heed my words, or I shall unleash horrors best left shackled. Her blood ran colder than the dark moon her so-called sister claimed to serve. You dare? Rani scoffed. I do. Because I must. Fare thee well, sister. May we never meet again. Melenia snarled and whipped a pot at the space she occupied. It passed through her sister's spectral form, banishing it. Damn her. Damn her and her mad machinations. I won't let you ruin this for me. Okay, sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed just leave a like and subscribe with post notification so when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.